Many people, when they encounter a bug in the iOS 11, they are like, I should have stayed on the old version on the iOS 10, but is it really the true? Is it really better? So in this video, I want to compare those two versions in 2018. So the title of this video is iOS 10 in 2018. I'm only talking about the iPhone 7 and below because the iPhone 8, 8 Plus and of course the iPhone 10 have actually come with iOS 11 out of the box. So it's not even possible to come back to iOS 10 for those devices. So if this is your first time you are seeing my hands on your screen, then you should begin with clicking the subscribe button and that way you will never miss another video. So what's up everybody, how has your day been? This is Apple Fox channel and I haven't even said hello to you yet. But anyways, let's begin with the first question many people may have. And that is, can I downgrade from iOS 11 to iOS 10 in case I have already updated to that version? And the answer is, no, it's not possible. Of course, iOS 11.3.1 is available, but right now this device is running the iOS 11.3. So it's not possible to come back to iOS 10. On this device, I'm running the iOS 10 because I simply haven't updated that version. But it's not possible to come back to this older version. By the way, it's not really important, but on my right hand you can see that this is the iPhone 6s and this is just the regular iPhone 6. And on the iPhone 6s I am running the iOS 11 and on the iPhone 6 I am running the iOS 10. When I am comparing these two versions in 2018, I have to say that in the iOS 11 there are so many different options how you can use 3D Touch. I actually made a video about it, you can check it out in the description down below, there will be the link to this video. But anyways, you have so many different options to use 3D Touch in this iOS 11 especially in the control center, because in the iOS 10 you don't really have many options. Of course this is the iPhone 6 and I don't even have the 3D Touch here, but if I would, I would only have the option to use it on these four toggles or these four icons at the bottom and nothing else. So it's kind of limited here. But on the other hand, in the iOS 11, every single of these toggles is 3D Touch compatible. The next thing I want to point out, and this is huge guys, this is something that has been pissing me off for such a long time and Apple still hasn't done anything about it. But anyways, if I open up the control center and let's say I want to for example turn off Wi-Fi, I will of course click on the Wi-Fi toggle. And guess what's gonna happen? <laughs> this is only going to disconnect me from nearby Wi-Fi connections until tomorrow. So if I go back to the settings and to the Wi-Fi, you can see that the Wi-Fi is still turned on, which doesn't make any sense because I have just turned it off in a control center. Like what the heck is going on? If I do the very same thing with the Bluetooth, you, you're gonna notice that it happens the very same way. And if I come back to the settings once again and take a look at the Bluetooth, you can see that it's not turned off. It has just been disconnected from all of the Bluetooth devices. In the iOS 10, however, as you can see, I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. And if I go to the control center, click on the Wi-Fi toggle, you can see that now not only I'm disconnected, but also the Wi-Fi is turned off completely. And if there would be one thing that I could bring from the iOS 10 all the way to the iOS 11, this would be it. If I'm supposed to compare the things everybody does throughout their day, for example like taking screenshots, if you do it on the iOS 10, you just basically take a screenshot, you hear the sound, and basically a screenshot has been saved to the photos. It's okay, right? But on the iOS 11, if I do the very same thing, if I perform the screenshot, you can see that the screenshot actually came down to the corner, and if I click on it, you can see that I have the option to mark up on it, I have the ability to crop the image, and I can share it immediately, or I can save it to my photos right now. Now. Another thing that we can see every single day is for example the animation when opening up any app. So let's take a look at for example these settings and let's open it up at the very same time. So you could have noticed that there is a very different animation. It looks a lot better in the iOS 11 in my opinion, but that is of course up to you. Or the animation when you want to enter the multitasking panel, you of course have to double press the home button, but this is the old animation from the iOS 10. And also notice that we have the page of the home screen right here, and in the iOS 11, if I take a look at this, we don't have the home screen page anymore. And it's just a really nice shaded look that we get after double pressing the home button. You can see that it just slides from the left side and it just looks really nice in my opinion. The lock screen has also been redefined on the iOS 11, so as you can see, this is the old version, you have the option to swipe down in order to get to the notification center, but on the iOS 11, you don't really have the option anymore, you are not able to swipe down, but instead you swipe up, and if I would have any notifications here, they would basically show up on the screen right now. 
so as you can see no older notifications. I already started to talk about the control center which is customizable in the iOS 11 and in the iOS 10 you basically have these two pages but simply you don't have the option to change anything here and in the iOS 11 you are able to change and add toggles here as well but this one is something I want to talk about and this is the screen recording feature that you just have to tap on it and you will basically be able to record a screen. This is something that many people are excited about because they can finally make gameplays on their iPad and stuff like that but anyways you don't have the option to do something like this naturally in the iOS 10. Many icons on the home screen have actually received a refreshed look just take a look at the app store for example also notice the calendar camera also maps have actually received a redesign if I swipe right here you're gonna be able to notice that we have a calculator which looks differently in the iOS 11 also if I open it up you'll be able to see that we have a completely different user interface. Even though I like this old version of the calculator more, a lot of people are complaining about the instability when updating to new major iOS version, like the iOS 11, and that happens a lot. When we get a new version, everything runs unsteady and we often experience many bugs and glitches and stuff like that. So at first, it may seem like staying on the old version is a better idea, but right now, after 11.3, the performance actually got a lot better and the stability got a lot Lot better as well so right now the iOS 11 is fully usable we don't really experience any bugs or glitches anymore so right now I wouldn't definitely stay on the iOS 10 if the decision would be up to me and this was basically the point of this video so in today's video I just wanted to tell you all of the things that you would miss in case you would stay on the iOS 10 in 2018 so in case you are still deciding and I'm not sure if there is somebody like this but if you are still running the iOS 10 if you are not anticipating jailbreak then you should probably go ahead and update to the iOS 11 in my opinion. There are many new features and it just looks better for me in the new version. But the decision is of course up to you. So I want to say thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and also that you have found this video useful. If you did, please leave a like to let me know that you have enjoyed it. And also subscribe for more content like this and make sure you will never miss anything important. So have a nice day and see you in the next video guys. Peace out.